Welcome to this week's history clip, part of our Hands-On History at Your House series. We're exploring the history of the people of the Mahoning Valley with these short videos, online activities, and museum challenges. For more information, be sure to visit our website, www.mahoninghistory.org. Today we're going to learn about several unsung heroes in our community's history. People who overcame major challenges and disasters with great success to change the community and the world for the better. To start, we're going to head back to 1874 when Shanini Abi Saab was born in Lebanon. She married a man named George and they moved to America for better working opportunities. History tells us that she used the name Jenny here in the United States. She hoped to make enough money here in America so that she and her husband could return to Lebanon and build a home there. But her husband passed away in 1908 and Jenny decided to stay in America and sent for her five children to come here to live with her. A few years later, her son Thomas, who was 17 years old at the time, fell ill and doctors urged the family to send him back to Lebanon, thinking that the fresh air there would help his illness. About a year later, Jenny learned that Thomas's health was very bad and that he would likely not survive for much longer. So she traveled back to Lebanon. Unfortunately, she arrived just a few days after her son passed away. It took her about a year to get her family's affairs in order and return back to America. She bought a third class ticket on a brand new ship called Titanic. She boarded in France with three cousins, all of whom were coming to the Youngstown area to work in steel mills, and a young woman named Benora, who was the niece of one of her cousins. Now, most of us know the story of Titanic, the fateful ship that met a horrible end when it struck an iceberg and quickly sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, killing around 1,500 people. Here are Jenny's experiences of that night. She says, Men, women, and children were storming the hallways. We were all ordered to put on life preservers. The sailors and men passengers pushed and pulled us up to the deck. Lifeboats were being lowered when we arrived there. Benora and I were placed in the next to last lifeboat to be lowered from the ship. Now the men on the deck told her she had to go and they ushered her into a lifeboat. But she tried to go back below to get her three male cousins who were traveling with her. But those men on the deck, who were all first-class passengers, pulled her back and told her there wasn't time and she had to get into a lifeboat. When she looked back, she realized that those men were not going to get off the ship. And she was so grateful for their sacrifice that these wealthy men would try to save her, a third-class passenger dressed only in her nightgown. When the survivors arrived in New York City, Jenny and Benora were sent to stay with the Jewish Aid Society who provided them with clothing and some money to make their return train trip to Youngstown. Benora's ticket was for Detroit where she would reunite with her family who lived there. Jenny arrived in Youngstown on April 24th, just 10 days after the horrible tragedy. She was so happy and relieved to see her daughters but would never forget the sadness of losing her cousins on that terrible night. She worked as a laundress over the next few years and helped her surviving sons to open a small grocery shop. And around 1918, Jenny purchased an ice cream cone mold and helped her sons start a business making ice cream cones. Then it was known as the George and Thomas Cone Company, but today it's known as the Joy Cone Company, headquartered right over in Hermitage, Pennsylvania, and it's the largest ice cream cone company in the world. So from that horrible night on the ocean to a happy day in the sky, let's learn about Mary Ann Campana. Mary Ann Campana immigrated to Youngstown from Abruzzi, Italy with her family when she was just eight years old. Her family lived close to the airport and she loved to watch people fly in airplanes. She often told her male cousins that she was going to become a pilot, but they said a woman could never do that. Well, she proved them wrong. She worked at a store and earned enough money to pay for flying lessons. In 1931, she became Ohio's first licensed teenaged female pilot at just 18 years old. And two years later, she set a world record for a light airplane endurance flight by flying for 12 hours and 27 minutes without stopping. She continued flying as part of a club, but worked as a buyer in retail for the rest of her life. She was even honored by the National Air and Space Museum for her contributions to flight. Here in Youngstown, a husband and wife team faced serious challenges and hatred as they worked to fulfill their dreams. 
Fletcher F. Armstrong, who was a native of South Carolina, came to Youngstown in 1915. He was a graduate of Virginia State College with a strong background in economics and business, and he earned enough cash and credit to open the F.F. F. Armstrong's haberdashery on Federal Street in 1916. Now, haberdashery is just a great word for a store that specializes in clothing, hats, shoes, and other items. Now, his haberdashery was the first and only African-American owned and operated business of its kind in the city. The store unfortunately closed in 1926, in part due to Ku Klux Klan activity and hatred towards African Americans in and around Youngstown. Armstrong's wife, Maggie E. Harth Armstrong, was a very versatile and educated woman who he met at Virginia State College. Now, she, of course, assisted in the haberdashery, and in 1926, she opened her own business, which was a beauty school in her home on Belmont Avenue, where she made and sold her own beauty products with the name The Forstein System. In 1929, she opened the first African-American-owned and operated beauty shop and school in Youngstown, and that was the very first one to be licensed by the state of Ohio's Department of Cosmetology. Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong were among the founders and charter members of the Centenary M.E. Church and active in the Belmont branch of the YWCA. Mrs. Armstrong was also the first African-American woman to hold the position of president of a local parent and teacher organization during the early 1930s. The Armstrongs were incredibly important to our community and their impact is still felt today. Our last unsung hero is a woman who fought against the odds to run a small business which has grown into a local hotspot with several locations around the Mahoning Valley. Rose Kravitz's parents, Leopold and Sadie Herschel, were raised in what was then the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Rose was born in Croatia and she came to Youngstown with her family in the early 1920s. She graduated from the Rayan High School nearby, but she didn't go to college at first. College, she explained, was for her brothers. And her mom warned Rose that she needed to learn how to become a good housemaker if she wanted to have a successful marriage. Unfortunately for us, Rose was going to put those skills to great use, but she was going to do it by opening a business. In 1939, Rose and her husband, Herb Kravitz, opened a delicatessen on Elm Street. They struggled through World War II, but kept the deli going there through the 1960s, when they began to experience trouble in the neighborhood. In 1970, Kravitz moved to a strip mall in Liberty on Belmont Avenue, and today Rose's son Jack oversees the business, and it is one of only a few old Jewish delis of its kind operating in America, and they have several locations around the Mahoning Valley. So we all owe our favorite corned beef sandwiches to Rose Kravitz and the legacy that she left behind. Now that you've learned more about the unsung heroes who helped to change our community and the world for the better, be sure to check out our website for your hands-on history at your house activities. Become a proud museum assistant by completing all of those activities, or learn even more and become a museum curator by learning about an unsung hero in your community. All of the challenge information can be found on our website, and be sure to share your creations online with the hashtag HistoryAtMyHouse2021.